I love this lip. Hi, welcome back. And today I'm just going to be showing you my current like everyday makeup look. This is kind of a look that it takes me like 10 minutes to do because I do this type of technique and look and use these products so often that I can basically do it without a mirror. Um, but yeah, so it's not like I use all of these products every day, but more so I use these products or similar products to get this kind of very um, effortless looking look. I've been really into underpainting lately because it has become kind of trendy and I've been really liking the look that it gives my complexion and how the products sit together and so yeah. Um, if you want to know how I do this look and the products that I use, then just keep on watching. Okay, to prime my face, I'm gonna be using the Auric Glow Lust in the shade Selenite. I'm just gonna put one pump onto the back of my hand and take this very dirty <laughs> dry sponge here. Um, this is I always use the Real Technique ones because I feel like they're just as good as the Beauty Blender and they're so much cheaper. And I'm just gonna prime the side of my face here at the high points for like that glowy, glowy base. Um, Cause I haven't been really reaching for highlighters all that much because it has been so hot out. And you could just walk out the door like that. Like it's such a beautiful product. So the concept of underpainting is trending right now. And so uh, I've just been doing it. Uh, and I've been really liking the way my makeup looks. I used to reserve it only for, you know, like more uh, event or like bridal makeup looks to make it look softer, but um, I've just been into it for the everyday lately. And so essentially what underpainting is, is putting all of the um, light and shadow on before you do any sort of like base layer like foundation. Since I don't really wear foundation, I just like to um, kind of chisel out my face with a cream bronzer. And this is my take on underpainting, like everybody kind of does it a little bit different. Um, so what I like to do is put my um, bronzing and or contour on and then I go in with like my uh, concealer and blend the two together as I go. So I just kind of put it kind of sporadically like where the kind of bronzy areas of my face are. So like in the contour, like bronzing area on my forehead. And then I put it into the crease of my eye. And then I just kind of go back and forth and add as I go. I'm just gonna blend out the forehead just a little bit more and then kind of go down the sides of my nose with um, whatever's remaining on the brush here and then kind of carve out my jawline. Kind of gonna leave the cheeks alone because those seem to blend out as I start adding concealer. And for concealer, I'm gonna be going in with my NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I use the shade Light 2.6 right now, and it's Cafe Con Leche. And so I'm taking the e.l.f. concealer brush. I love this concealer brush because it's pretty big, but it's den densely packed. Um, so it really blends out the product in a really beautiful way. I always say this, but like, I think e.l.f. makes really great, um, high quality, like high quality for what they are, you know? Um, but they make really good affordable brushes. So if you're just starting out and or if you need to fill a gap in your collection of makeup brushes, but you're kind of on a budget, I highly recommend e.l.f. Um, for like drugstore options. So, um, but this concealer brush in, in general is, I just think it's really great. Um, it's kind of broken. I have to like re-glue it, but it's like, it like pops off. Um, but I just can't get myself to like, just get a new one, which I probably should soon. But uh, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> so I'm just taking that NARS concealer everywhere and blending around that bronzer. Not on top of the bronzer, but just around it and kind of merging the two where they meet. And I just think that this just creates like such a lovely 
complexion look like it just looks so like seamless and natural and airbrushed and you just the more time you work it in the better your complexion is gonna look and so I just really take a lot of time on this So something I've noticed that's a key component to underpainting um, is keeping your brushes for different things handy. So I'm just going back in the side of this brush. This is an old Kat Von D brush. It was like part of the Shade and Light contour set from years ago. Um, and she's still just as great. Um, but uh, I'm just going in with the side of the brush that I use to apply my bronzer. And instead of adding more product, I'm just using whatever's left on the brush and then moving and blending the product that's already on my face in with my concealer. And you see how diffused and like just pretty that looks. I've been doing this every day, so it's just, uh, I've been really enjoying it. My dent in my, uh, my Say bronzer is getting bigger. Um, if you're new here, I did say that I want to try and like pan this by the fall and so uh yeah look at that dip i don't know if you can tell but yeah there's a significant dip i've been really enjoying this um now that most of my base is on i'm gonna go in with the nyx brow glue and just kind of slick up my brows real quick i've been getting back into my just laminated brow just slicking everything i'm trying to like grow my hair out um not necessarily all one length, but just like kind of get like curtain bangs again and just have like a more simple hairstyle. I've had bangs for years, like whether they're curtain and or like micro, like mini little bangs, um, because I've always been super insecure of my forehead. And um, I'm just I'm just trying to like love my face. <laughs> you know, like I'm trying to teach myself to like love my face. Uh, I've just been like slicking everything, like all my hair, just slicking it and just like knowing myself, if that makes sense, just like knowing my face. Um, my mom used to wear her hair like this a lot because she was um, in a lot of like dance classes and whatnot. She did like uh, she was like a flamenco dancer and uh, she was also uh, like a ballerina and a tap dancer. She did jazz and so she had like her hair slicked back like this a lot and I think when my my forehead is exposed like I look a lot more like her um, which is kind of a complicated subject for me as like my mom. So um, it's uh, it's like one of those things where I'm trying to like know my face and also like just accept that I do have some of my mother's features. Um, but anyways, I'm slicking up my my brows. That got really personal really fast. <laughs> and for blush, I'm gonna go in with my trusty Victoria Beckham Beauty um, Cheeky Posh blush in the shade Playground. Um, I don't really have like an everyday blush shade that I use because I, I just love all of my blushes um but I have been really packing on the like kind of bronzer-esque terracotta shades like this and sunkissed and rose inks um daylily um because I just I just love a bronzer and I think it just looks really really good all year round but especially when the warmer months start to happen and um yeah, it's just like my favorite look, but you can't go wrong with this blush ever. So this is probably my most used. This and Sunkist are my most used. Um, but if you have one, you don't necessarily need the other unless you're like um, a bronzer fanatic like me. Um, I would say that they're pretty interchangeable and if you're on a budget um, and or you're just trying to keep a more curated collection. If you have Sunkist, you don't need Playground. And if you have Playground, you don't need Sunkist. But there's no harm in having both. All right, I'm going back into my concealer brush with nothing on it and just making sure the edges are all like smoothly blended together. Like there's no like harsh lines. Like they're all like one big product <laughs> on my cheek. That looks really nice. And that Auric Glow Lust is like really still in the show right now, as it always does. It's such a beautiful product. And moving on to eyes, um, I've been bouncing around from 
between two palettes a lot lately for like an everyday look and one is the Rowan Quad which is the Mood Forever which is one of my favorite eyeshadow products ever and the other one um, I've been leaning towards just a little bit more lately and it's the 75 degree palette by Rowan and that's only because I really enjoy doing like kind of bronzy golden gilded looks in warmer months and so this is one of if you're into that like this is one of like the best palettes that you can own also if you're into like wet looking cream eyeshadows in general and like very warm toned eyeshadows this is an amazing palette to own um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this kind of um warm peachy brownish kind of shade uh, and use that all over the lid as my base. Something I do want to note is that if you own this palette and you've been eyeing up the Disco Eye and the Summer Disco Eye, you don't really need them because while the Disco Eye formula by Rowan isn't really, isn't necessarily a cream, they are the same tones and a very similar like finish and effect on the eye once they're on. And so I don't want to say they're dupes, but they're similar enough that um, I myself honestly can't justify owning both. Um, so if you have one, you don't necessarily need the other. Um, but I do have both because I just... I kind of went on like a, a like a Rowan splurge last year and I just started buying everything and I was like, whoa, you need to calm down. Um, but anyways, so this one is very similar to the Rowan Summer Disco. And then the next shade I use is kind of um, a more golden version of the regular Disco Eye. And so that shade that I was just mentioning is right here, the more creamy golden version of the Disco Eye, so you might prefer this one more. And this one doesn't have as much like dispersed different sized glitters in it the way the Disco Eye does. Um, so you might prefer this one more. But like I said, there's no harm in owning both. It's just that you'll find that they are very similar once on the eyes. But also like different enough that it's like if this is like the look that you go for in the summertime or all year long that it's not like silly to own. I guess I should preface that it's not silly to own both but I I do feel that since I don't wear these looks all year round that I it's not really necessary for me to own both. I'm gonna zoom you in for this next part and since I was just like talking about the disco eye so much so this is the um just regular disco eye um and I just kind of want to wear it now. So I'm just going to like really dig my finger in. And you can see like it gives you like a bunch of different colored glitters and it's much more champagne. And so I'm just going to like tap that just on my lid area. Because I do think it's kind of a fun thing to add to eye looks. And you can see it just kind of like amplified all of that. I love both equally, to be honest. And the Disco Eye is a really fun product, but it's not as like emollient. It's not as like pigmented and emollient as their quads. And you can see how that added just like really big hunks of glitter randomly. It's really fun. It's a really fun eyeshadow. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my concealer brush again and I'm just gonna kinda swipe my under eyes here to kind of get rid of some of the glitter that kind of came down pretty far. Not fallout, but just more so like from me smudging my finger on my face. And just kind of like pull that up just so it's a little cleaner. And finishing up the eyes, I'm going in with the Merit Clean Lash Mascara. This is currently, I think, my favorite mascara. I reach for it so much. And I'm going to do a little thing copied from my sister because my sister has such amazing lashes. So what she does is she like brushes it down with her eyes closed and then she goes up and it gives her like so much volume. Um, 
because she has really thick and like long lashes like me and I could almost argue that hers are even thicker and longer <laughs> um but she always like brushes down and then goes up and it just I've been doing it and it does make a difference and there you can see the difference with no mascara and mascara so it was like better posture but it's really hard because I'm on my bed so it's just like bouncing and like I find myself like going like this when I apply my makeup and it's <sighs> just have to like sit sit I'm going in with my NYX lip pencil in the shade nude beige and just kind of carving out my lips I've been an absolute fanatic for the Clarins lip oil. I, <laughs> I just, I just use this every day. I just love it. <laughs> and it's so juicy and yummy and it tastes and smells amazing. This is in the shade Honey. And I love the way it looks over top of a uh, nude beige. Like that looks. And since this is a pretty glowy base, I'm just gonna go in with my Ilia loose powder. I think it's called Fade Into You. And I like to really saturate my brush and then like work it around in the cap here and make sure the, all of the bristles are really coated so I don't get any like clumps. And I kind of just tap. And then in here I kind of roll I love this brush. I don't know if it still exists. It's an old Morphe brush. It's the Morphe um, M438, if you're interested. And I think it's perfect for loose powder. And I'm just kind of taking that in the little areas here to just provide a little bit of longevity. And I don't dip it in again. I don't want more than that. But I love this powder. It's great. I've had it for so long. <laughs> okay, and that is it. This is the finished look. Um, this is my kind of current go-to look for every day. This hair. Not necessarily these products in particular every day, but this is the desired look that I go for. And it's very glowy. It's very put together. It's very soft. And it does have that kind of summery, a bronzy gilded look that I'm after during the warmer months and I think the Rowan 75 degree palette is like perfect for that so if you're into that then maybe look into it I don't know anyways that's all for me today and like comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye